Farm News Media presents Farm News 5. Dinner on the farm was served with a side of politics. Michigan Farm Fund could be in the palm of your hand with the state's guide to agritourism. And Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts has your market update. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. Hum Farm in Gratiot County hosted Dinner on the Farm with U.S. Representative John Molinar earlier this week. The congressman discussed legislative issues including labor needs and the agriculture budget. The president's budget came out uh, really before the you know, departments really have been assembled. And so, you know, it's something that the Congress uh, looks at, evaluates, but also we will write our own uh, appropriations process and uh, work on that in Congress and, and work with the president to have that signed into law. We definitely want to support agriculture. Dinner on the farm involved Farm Bureau members from 14 counties in the Congressman's District, which encompasses much of the central Lower Peninsula. June is National Dairy Month, a time to celebrate the many dairy products produced by Michigan's dairy farmers. And while enjoying that cold glass of milk or delicious cheddar cheese, one can't ignore the market challenges facing producers today. The industry is in the midst of a cyclical downturn that has lasted longer than most, and it looks to continue in the near term. The root of the problem? An abundance of supply relative to demand. In Michigan, for example, the dairy industry has grown by 72 percent since 2004, and the industry added 12,000 cows in 2016 alone, a year when the average producer was losing money. Adding to the problem locally is a dearth of processing capacity. But Benjamin Spitzley, Vice President and Commercial Lending Group Manager at Greenstone Farm Credit Services, believes over time the market will balance itself out as supply and demand draw closer together and processing capacity is added. Well, we'd really like to see some added processing capacity. That I'm not saying that's going to all of a sudden magically increase our prices, but it will eliminate some of this additional transportation and marketing and balancing costs that we're dealing with. Spitzley advises producers to take a look at their financials to see if they can cut costs or streamline operations. Work with your lender, put, put your plan together, have, have your first plan and, and then a plan B as well, right? How are you going to get through this and what are areas that you can cut or get a little leaner at? It's anticipated that milk prices will begin to rebound by the fourth quarter of 2017, though the increase is expected to be modest given the processing issue. One fact remains, Michigan is a great place to produce milk. you got to dial in costs and and weather the storm and yeah the markets will come around we're we're going to be this is a good place to make milk this is the climate's right we have an abundance of water uh, we can grow good forages so we're positioned well you can learn more at michiganfarmnews.com the michigan soybean promotion committee is devoted to investing soybean farmer checkoff dollars to address grower concerns we focus our efforts on production research market development and outreach Learn more at michigansoybean.org. The Michigan Agritourism Association has released its 2017 directory. The 10th annual edition features information on the state's farm markets, you pick farms, educational farms, and much more. Printed copies are available at Farm Bureau Insurance offices, Chemical Bank locations, and Michigan Welcome Centers. You can learn more online at michiganfarmfun.com. Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts joins me now with our market update. Thanks, Janelle. Favorable forecasts have left a bearish tone on trade this week. After having almost eliminated a huge net short in corn last week, funds are back to selling this week. Friday afternoon's CFTC report will be closely watched for the size of managed money's rebuilt short. Funds also have a bearish outlook for wheat thanks to big carryouts and are very bearish soybeans because of big planted acres and a large South American crop. Chicago wheat futures have gained a boost over the past two weeks in June, thanks to a somewhat disappointing early harvest, as well as drought conditions in the northern plains. Spreads are still reflecting significant carry, encouraging producers to store new crop wheat. 
Many have taken advantage of the latest move, forward contracting sales into 2018, or locking in coverage for next year's crop. Corn will likely continue to be choppy as we move into important development stages in July. Forecasts will be closely watched by traders. Positioning ahead of the June 30th USD report will be key in the near term. Soybeans are threatening to move to values that start with an 8 as funds maintain their big net short, without any big shifts thus far like what was seen in corn. Expect this trend to continue as we head into the June 30th USD report. Short covering rallies are possible, but big planted acres are the story here. For more information, go to michigan.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.